Jasmine and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I have a video that's actually been requested. Yay! So today's video is about study tips for pharmacy school or how I get a 4.0 semester in pharmacy school because my first semester I was struggling a little bit but now I think I have the key. So if you guys want to know how I study, what tools I use to study, and basically how I'm an overall A student in pharmacy school, please keep watching. Also make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to know more about me, my lifestyle in pharmacy, and to get a dose of Jasmine. Thanks for watching, y'all. Okay, so before I get started, I wanna make sure that you guys know one thing that I learned my first semester of pharmacy school, and that is if you don't take care of yourself, you will not be able to get great grades in pharmacy school. So if you're not sleeping long enough, if you're not eating before you go to class, if you're not drinking water, you will not be able to use these tips. So make sure you take care of yourself before you start pharmacy school or before you even try to study or go to the library. Okay, so tip number one is to use YouTube videos. So I know you're already watching YouTube, which means you know how to use it. So why not use free study tips for pharmacy school? So for me, um, it's not enough for me to just go to a lecture and listen to someone talk about something. I actually have to know how things work together and how pieces of the puzzle fit together to have an overall picture. So I'll watch YouTube videos that are free. So the first channel that I absolutely love it's called Speed Pharmacology. I'm gonna put it in the description box, but Speed Pharmacology has literally helped me so much. I mean, not only with pharmacology, but with pharmacotherapy as well. So if you know how a drug works in terms of absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination, then you will know why we choose certain therapies for different patients and for different patient populations. So for example, if you know that a drug is completely eliminated by your kidneys, or is completely renally eliminated, then you know if somebody has chronic kidney disease or if they have stage three CKD, you know we do not wanna use this drug in this patient because it's renally eliminated. So the drug can build up in your body. So pharmacology is the way to go and speed pharmacology is literally a lifesaver. Um, the second channel that I use a lot now is called osmosis. So for pathophysiology, use osmosis it's free um it's very helpful and it lets you know the major things you need to know about the disease state diagnosis and different things like that in pharmacy school so number one watch youtube videos Okay, so tip number two is to learn your learning style. I know this sounds so trivial, but if you know how you learn and how things click in your brain, it will definitely help you study. So for me, I have to read and I have to write to learn. So I can't type notes because it doesn't work for me. But in class, you have to type notes because things move really quickly. So after class, I will go through and write out my notes. But if you know exactly how you learn, you can apply those to different classes. So if you are an auditory learner and you hear things, you can go back and rewatch the lecture if your school has those options. But number two, just learn your learning style. It'll help so much in the long run. Okay, tip number three is to always think about why something happens and not just how it happens. So for example, in pharmacy, we use something called guidelines and they are basically the standard for how you should treat a patient. And with these guidelines, you shouldn't just read it for face value and know, oh, in the hypertension guidelines, we use ACEs and ARBs because they do this. You should know exactly why we use ACEs and ARBs, what trials have been used that let us know that ACEs and ARBs are great for patients with hypertension. And also you should know the pharmacology behind why these drugs are what we use. So if you go into pharmacy school and you know, okay, I know that ACEs and ARBs are used in hypertension, that's not enough. You need to know why things happen in order to add to the pieces of the puzzle. So if you, when you study, just think, why am I studying this and why does this make sense? <laughs> okay, so I forgot what number I'm on with tips, but the next tip is to go to office hours. So this sounds really not that difficult, but if you don't understand why, go talk to your professor. So there are also teacher's assistants that can help you, but I've learned that if you just go straight to the professor, they can explain exactly what you need to know. And it also helps you to make a relationship with your professors. So I know for me that chemistry is not my thing. And we took a class called pharmaceutics. And it's basically how drugs work in the body or how we develop drugs based on how they work in the body. And I was struggling so bad until I went to talk to my professors. So if you go and talk to them, they will literally help you and give you study tips. Um, they gave me books that I could read to help. They gave me extra resources that I could use to help things actually click in my brain. So talk to your professors. They're not the enemy. They can definitely help you. 
Okay, so my next tip is to make sure that you draw things out. If you can draw things out, then things will click in your brain. So a major example that I have is drawing a nephron or a kidney cell. If you can draw a nephron in the way that ions move in and out, then you definitely know how some drugs work because they work through the kidney. <laughs> so for example, if you know the SGLT2 transporters are in the kidney, then you know if you block those, all the sugar in your body will be peed out. <laughs> So if you know that you're peeing out sugar, you know how the drug works and you can almost kind of guess some of the side effects. So you know that bacteria love sugar. If you pee out all of your sugar, then you may get a UTI because it's gonna be bacteria there. So if you know how different pieces of the puzzle work together to draw things out, it will definitely help you learn. Another thing to draw out is different guidelines have different algorithms. So if you can draw the step-by-step ways that you can treat a patient or step-by-step -step ways to choose different therapies based on different stages of diseases, then they can help you study as well. And the last thing I want to say that you can draw out is something called a concept map. Ugh. When I tell you that concept maps are so, 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 so helpful, it definitely helps. So if you can draw a concept map, it includes major things like diagnosis, um, pathophysiology of the disease state, progression of the disease, um, the different goals for treatment, the different therapeutic options, the different monitoring parameters. If you can write out all those things and make connections between the diagnosis and the treatment outcomes or different aspects of the concept map, boom, you got it. You know about the disease state and you basically know how to treat it. So draw things out. Okay, so the next tip that I have for studying in pharmacy school is to use a group. So study in a group. But before you join that group, make sure you study before you go. So I did learn this in pharmacy school. You can't show up to a group session and not know anything and expect the group to teach you. The purpose is to combine everything that you guys know, tell each other things that one person may know and one person may not know, teach each other, um, learn the different concepts together. Don't just show up to the group session not knowing anything. And this way it helps you to fill in those gaps and know exactly what you need to know for the exam because other people pick up on things that you may not. They may have paid attention to something that you zoned out in with class. So <laughs> group study sessions are so helpful. And before major exams, try to do group study sessions. Why not? They're already your friends. So use what they know and give them some of what you know. So use group study sessions. And the absolute last tip that I have is to use flashcards. Um, I use Quizlet. Some of my classmates use Anki, but I use Quizlet because it's free. <laughs> so if you want to study while you are on your commute to school, if you ride the bus like I do, um, that's 20 minutes that you can study going to school and 20 minutes back. That's 40 extra minutes of study time. It helps you reinforce major concepts. If you don't know something, you can put a star beside it and revisit it. It gives you the option to write things down. You can play cool games anything to help reinforce concepts and reinforce topics. So make sure that you're using some type of flashcards, Quizlet, or something in your downtime so you can know, okay, I absolutely know the first line medications and hypertension, or I absolutely know the medications that we should use on heart failure. This will definitely help things stick and it will definitely help make you a better student pharmacist. So use flashcards, it's free, why not? So I know you guys may be wondering, how often do you study? When do you study? Where do you study? So the first thing, I normally study in a library, but if I need some vibes or I need a good atmosphere, I use a coffee shop. So that way it can help me focus. I cannot study at home. It's too much going on around here. <laughs> I have too much makeup, too much Instagram, blah, blah, blah. It's too many distractions. So coffee shops are a good idea. Um, libraries are a great idea. And even at school, if you can find a chill place to study there. But I always like to have somebody somewhere with a lot of windows so I can get some good light and I can have good energy while I'm studying. And when to study. So most of the time in pharmacy school, you will be studying practically every single day. And that's just the fact of the matter. Pharmacy school is not easy. Um, if it was easy, everybody would do it. <laughs> But it's not, so you should be studying it every day so that you can be the best patient care provider whenever you do graduate. But closer to exam time, that studying should pick up dramatically. And I'm talking dramatically. <laughs> so at minimum five to seven days before your exam, you should schedule out time in your calendar to write down, okay, I should start studying today. So during that time, you should redraw all of your pictures and rewrite down all of your algorithms 
and draw different things watch youtube videos ask questions to your professors for more clarification but make sure that you guys are studying more intently um, make sure that you are being more intentional about your time right before your exam okay so thank you guys so much for watching my video i hope this video gave you some tips on how to study for pharmacy school and what you should do before an exam so if you guys learned something if you like my channel if you want to know more about me my lifestyle and pharmacy or dose of jasmine make sure you guys like comment and subscribe i mean why not click another video it's going to be popping up soon make sure you subscribe and let me know what other videos you want to see in the comments below so thank you guys so much for watching see you later Thank you.